No, oh, welcome back to the QPR view and Jared. Oh, talk us through the last five minutes of that game, please, against Huddersfield. I'm dying, dying to to get your view on it all. I think I think I was so frustrated at the performance, even when the goal went in. There was there wasn't a sense of relief or anything. It was kind of an annoyance that it had taken them so long to show any kind of urgency to kind of put any kind of passages of passages of play play together. Um, and obviously it's better to be three points at, off safety than six points off, off safety. But again, it just feels like another opportunity missed. I think there's been three opportunities that we've had to come out of the relegation zone, Plymouth at home, Jeff Wednesday away and this one. And every time we've fallen short, and I think it says a lot about the group of players and where the season's heading. Um, how much was the referee uh, um, affected the the results and, and the performance? Um, it, it was a very nervy game, wasn't it? I think from from both sides. But I mean, from what I was watching, that I, I was probably one of the worst refereeing performances I've seen in, in a live game, anyway, on the Championship level. Mm-hmm. Yeah, again, on social media, I don't think I've ever seen such outrage at a refereeing, ref, refereeing performance affecting the outcome of the game. I'm not quite sure. He affected the flow of the game. There was there was, there was 31 fouls. There was hardly a bad tackle in there. Um, Colback and Field picked up yellow cards, which I think Field suspended now for two games, and it was a nothing booking. The Clark Salter booking in the first half was ridiculous. The Drew booking was ridiculous. And he, he's one of those referees that just loved being the centre of attention the way that he would sprint when he put the ball down for a free kick it was yeah not great and obviously their goal was clearly offside as well from the free kick that came in so but yeah. our performance wasn't good enough with or without a referee um the performance yeah just wasn't wasn't there i'll read a comment that was written on the bbc website and let's see if you agree with this one um it says Marty is no better than what has gone before. Um, it was a risk bringing in someone with no championship experience from abroad. Warnock would have had players playing in their right and natural positions to get the best out of the team. Then the results would have followed. Chair is not a left winger, left midfielder. Armstrong is a left winger, field in central midfield. Um, do you agree with any of that? The, the Warnock thing, there seems to be a few fans that bring that one up. Would we be? any better off uh, I honestly don't think anybody could turn this squad of players around I think it's nine wins and 59 matches under four different managers it's it's ridiculous you 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 could have Pep in there probably and I don't think he would do anything um, Marty's definitely improved the style of play I think since he came in we would be 14th or 15th in the league table um, football's been better there's been some pretty bad, bad performances still. Um, I, I do feel that we're still not getting the best out of chair. That person's right. He does seem to be stuck wide left so, so often and doesn't have the freedom to to come inside, doesn't have the freedom to interchange with, with Willock either. And yeah, um, there's aspects of it are true. We would be dead and buried if Ainsworth was still in charge though. So... Yeah, do you honestly believe that? Do you think you'd be down now <coughs> if uh, if you still had with? Yeah, yeah. I'm. I again. I he definitely wasn't getting a tune out of any of these players. Um, and yeah, the wins we've had since Marty came in, we wouldn't have got them under okay. the previous manager. We'll talk about transfers for me then because we're transfer window closes in, in a couple of days' time. Um, you managed to get a couple, uh, a couple in or one in at least. Um, talk me through that one and then any others likely to happen. Um, yeah, the striker came a little bit out of the blue actually. Um, no one's really ever heard of him before. Um, I think it was, I think it's 31 goals and 53 appearances for Royal Antwerp, which is, isn't a bad, a bad record at all. Um, don't think he scored on loan at Schalke last season and 15 appearances um, my big concern about it is that he's not played all season so we need somebody to come in and hit the ground running and when you've not played for a few months I think that might be hard but again I think it was a case of getting someone like and- Andre Dezel out to bring in a striker because yeah the strikers just aren't aren't good enough really um, 
yeah, it's where you're lacking, isn't it? Goals will keep you up. Uh, yeah. And, and keeping him out the other end. Um, yeah. All right, then. Let's talk about then your fixtures then this uh, this this month because you've got um, you've got five games across now. Um, 24, 24 games. You've got um, Blackburn, of course, um, this weekend, which we'll get your predictions on in a minute. And then Norwich at home, Rotherham at home. Now. Norwich aren't pulling up any trees and they're very dodgy away from home. So surely they you have to now win every single home game. We said that at the end of December when we had Cardiff, Millwall, Watford and Huddersfield at home and we've won one of those games. So again, uh, I, I kind of, the optimism that maybe I had at the start of the month thinking we had four home home games, maybe we could get three wins. It's, it's not happened and I, I just can't see it turning around enough for us to get enough wins. I think, if, like I said, it's nine wins in 59 games. We're going to have to get seven wins out of our last 16 games. So I just can't see it happening. Um, but like you say, we've got home games coming up this month and in the future with, with Birmingham and Sheffield Wednesday that are winnable games. Yeah. But it seems to be when the players have a winnable game, they just don't, don't perform. Yeah, well, that's all you are. You are just one win and you get out of it, aren't you? You've got to keep mm-hmm. us trap Huddersfield in there and close the gap on these others. Um, that's yeah. only that's only two wins and then it drags a whole other set of teams. That's yeah. the key, isn't it? Because you don't yeah. want Huddersfield escaping. It's to no, drag us uh, into it. If we could get a result at Blackburn, again, it just pulls them a little bit close, closer in too. But, um, yeah. Okay, let's get some predictions then. Blackburn QPR then this weekend. Um, what are you going with? I was just looking at our record against Blackburn. I think it's three wins in 24. <laughs> we haven't won at Ewood Park since 1999. And we've been in the same league as them quite a lot of that time too. Um, so it's just one of those games that we never seem to form or come close to getting a result. Um, probably go for a very boring 1-0 defeat, I would say. <laughs> right cheers Joe we'll check in with you next week enjoy the thank game thank you Mark thank thanks you. take care